I fight every day. Mm -hmm. Every day is a fight. It's a war. We don't fight against flesh and blood, right? Every day is a war. To, to, to be the man God wants me to be, there's temptations every, at every turn. Satan is not like, oh, let's give him a day off. <laughs> like, right. And I think sometime in the church when somebody does fall or commit a sin and we jump on them, we, 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 we pile on versus going, man, this is a war. We're, hey, help them get back on, on this side. You know, prepare them, get restore them, and let's let's go back out to battle. But every single day is a battle, and I think that's one thing struggle I struggled with growing up in church. It seemed like every Christian was doing great. It was like this: oh, I'm just doing Jesus. I'm doing blessed and highly favored. You know, the, all that that beautiful words, and that could be true. But man, my life was more like an EKG. <laughs> right. Me too. And I remember a friend said something. He's not the only one that said it, but I was learning in the church that it's okay to not be okay. Yes. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Connecting Faith and Life. I'm Mr. Brown. Connecting Faith and Life is a ministry of Proclaim Ministries, or is our podcast of Proclaim Ministries, where our desire is to help you connect faith and life. That's why the name is where it is. So if you're new to Proclaim Ministries, hey, you can check us out at ProclaimMinistries.com. If you're a current uh, follower, supporter, we thank you for your support. And I'm excited to continue our podcast and all the videos that we do and things that we do um, to help people connect faith and life. Well, today in the podcast, we have a guest. I have a guest. I'm a conversation with Pastor Travis Osborne. Um, we have several podcasts we did together, so I'm, I'm looking forward to releasing those. You can see them. Um, you can get them on Apple Podcasts. Please subscribe and leave us a comment there. If you are Google Podcasts, wherever you get podcasts, you can find Spotify. Yeah, Amazon, all those places. But the best place you can get it is by downloading our app. Go to ProclaimInitiative.com slash app. You can find our app there. Or you can just look in your whatever it is, your app store on your Google or your Apple iPhone. Look in the Play Store for or Play Store or Apple Store for Proclaim Ministries and you find our app there. So with that said, I want to jump into this conversation. And I think it was a great one. So we have three podcasts that we did together. And if you like it, please leave a comment and let Pastor Travis know he should come back and be on the podcast. I really enjoyed talking to him. So in this first episode, uh, we're going to talk about, we got three segments basically, which we do talk about a lot of stuff. We get on rabbit trails because that's what pastors do. And I think it's kind of biblical because if you listen to, read the Apostle Paul, um, he gets on rabbit trails too. Whenever he starts talking about Jesus, he go off on these tangents, but they all have a point. And I think our conversation has a point too. So check it out. Please listen to this podcast. So uh, we open up, just get to know Travis, who he is. Then we get into um, approach to ministry because I like our, our approach is kind of similar to ministry, how we approach ministry. Um, and we also talk about just being real about every day is a fight. You know, some people, I thought that Christianity was be easy as I got older, but every day is a fight. But it's a fight that we fight from victory and not for victory because Christ has already won the victory. But you'll hear us talk about that more. Um, we also talk about the fact it's okay not to be okay. I grew up as a Christian thinking that, you know, I'm the one with the problems. All these other Christians are, are blessed and highly favored and they're doing so well. So, <laughs> so we talk about that. And then we talked about filling our minds with God's word, how important that is. And we end our conversation talking about giving advice to how to get in God's word um, and how to make sure that we are getting our face in the book and, and reading and responding to God's word. So hope you enjoy this podcast. Now, if you're watching this podcast on YouTube or on an app, I must say, I, our, I didn't like the way I framed the video and didn't have this nice new background you're looking at right now if you're looking at it. But the content was so good. And we made a couple mistakes when we started, but I left it all in there because I thought it was great content. So just listen to it. If you don't like the way it looks, just close your eyes and listen to what we have to say. It's not that bad. But check it out. Uh, my podcast, our podcast, Connecting Vegan Life episode with Pastor Travis Osborne. Uh, Travis, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, we have a lot of good conversations, and I, I will confess right now, I mentioned you, not by name, one of my recent videos for students. Hi. And it was about, when I sit down with certain people, they just energize you. They just, uh, you leave the conversation feeling better, and that was you. I really yeah. appreciate our conversations. I figured, hey, let's get them on the podcast and have some conversations about connecting faith in life, because that's what Proclaim Ministry is all about. And you're a pastor, we've known you for a while, and we, my wife and I really appreciate your style of genuine teaching and just practical stuff too. I know you came from a youth group background, but the truth is some of that's the most effective stuff for adults too. Yeah. So yeah. let's start by telling people about your, a little bit about yourself um, okay. and about your beautiful wife, because that's probably the most important thing about you. Oh, right? yeah, of course. You, start you there. bet. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I'll start. Uh, my wife and I met at a Christian college. I know that's really rare. People don't ever do that. <laughs> um, but we both transferred to a university. It was called Simpson College up here in Redding, California when we were 
Volk. You guys she met was, at Reading. We know, did. Yeah, she okay. was from the Santa Cruz, the Bay Area, transferred as a junior. I transferred from a, a university in Southern California up here, small college, and uh, we've been married 26 years, and we just really enjoy each other. We just, uh, she asked me, uh, the other night, uh, she's always good about asking good questions, you know, reflective questions. And so is is in the night, we're ready to go to sleep. And she said, what, what's, what are you looking forward to most tomorrow? And I said, coming home. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and it was kind of a joke because there was a lot to do at a lot of meetings. But the truth is, that's actually, and I love ministry, but I'd say that my favorite part of the day is coming home, coming home and uh, getting to hang together. So, yeah, and um, I kind of feel that way when I go on a trip, like, I, you know, I have these trips scheduled like a week on from home and I always tell my father, I can't wait to get home. I'm yeah. just looking forward to being done. I, I enjoy the trips. I enjoy being there, but I just look forward to coming home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I'm, I'm enjoying that. And so I um, got invited to a youth group in Southern California at a church when I was 16 years old. And that invitation, I stayed at that youth group and then I stayed at that church. I became a pastor and I, I was there for 17 years total um, just because Jason, you know, on a Wednesday said, you're coming to youth group tonight, right? I said, okay. And I, I knew Jesus, um, but I didn't know the church. And so, so he said, you're coming, right? He didn't he, say, are you coming? It, it, was a, it was one of the lamest invitations. It wasn't well thought out. I think I thought he made a mistake because I didn't know that I was allowed to show up at his youth group. But the kids always talked about it, my friends. And he said, hey, you're coming tonight, right? And um, I said, okay. And that. I didn't uh, stop. Yeah. I didn't record. Okay. <laughs> the big record button. The big record button. Oh, uh, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, we had a little technical difficulty, so we switched some things up, but I like what we said the first time, so I'm going to keep that. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> going to keep that going. So you were saying you love coming back to your wife, coming yeah. home, and you talked about how you guys met, and she got her MRS degree. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and she got another one, too, is a teaching degree, but she did get her MRS degree, and I got, I guess I didn't get my MR degree because I was probably already a mister. <laughs> yeah. I didn't get, but yeah, no, I love, love coming home. Um, my favorite part of the day, uh, is, is just coming home, hanging out with her. My son is 17, my youngest, and I have two kids that have just recently, one's in college, another one's doing some, um, work with the American Conservation Corps out in Flagstaff. So you area. got two, two boys and one girl? Uh, yes. Uh, our daughter's the oldest. Okay. And she's, um, just doing outdoor work and loving it. And then my son is in Minnesota, my, uh, and then my youngest is still at home. So. And what school is he he's at? Uh, it's a Crown College is the college in Minnesota, and okay. then my son is locally at Reading Christian. Okay. They're going into soccer playoffs this week. And so are you excited about that? We are. They got drawn against uh, U Prep, which is a local school that's good in athletes, uh, athletics, and um it's a it's a tough one. Although I my son is always like, man, you know, they're so much better. But I I always say this, and my my kids don't like this. I say, but you know, the sun shines on a dog's butt sometimes, <laughs> and, and I and they, they hate that. But I'm like, but I hate when they say we're never gonna win. I'm like, but you don't know. You don't know. Someday. Look at the Super Bowl, right? That's who, who, right. Who made the Super days. Bowl this year, right? And he says, well, that means you're calling us the dog's butt. And well, yeah, that's what you are. But the sun shines on it sometimes. So. Be happy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, I just I, I would love to talk a little bit about your approach to ministry. As I talked about, Proclaim Ministry is all about helping people connect faith in life. I believe I grew up in a in a system where you went to church, you went home, went to school, and I never connected those three. The way I lived at church, the way I lived at home, I lived in school was quite different. And there was this this this, this disconnect. And so I believe in ministry, it's important to um, teach in a way that helps people connect faith in life. Well, it's practical stuff. It's not just like pie in the sky one yeah. day. It is how we live every day. And I kind of sense that when I hear you speaking, when I hear you teaching, it's not just about knowing theology and it's not just about feeling good. <laughs> I think sometimes those can be the thing. Oh, I just feel good. Things are great. Why do you feel great? Well, I don't know. They don't really have the substance. And I think it's so important to have the substance. And because if you have and you know who God is, Life is great, even though there's problems. Life is still awesome, even though you have problems. But when you know God, you grow to know Him better, and that is my foundation. So what is your approach? If you can give me just a, I don't know if you ever thought it through, but what is your approach when it comes to ministry? Yeah, well, um, ultimately, we get to teach uh, God's Word. That's the most important thing that we get to teach. And I've learned more and more that what a privilege it is. I get to dive into God's Word, and God gets to transform and change me and work on me throughout the week or the weeks that I'm studying certain passages. And then that 
uh, my teaching should be coming from an overflow of what God has been teaching me through that passage. And and so really, I'm really fortunate if, if I allow that, wow, and then I get so excited when, we, when I get to teach or put together a, a message because hopefully, there's also um, just real life transformation happening because sometimes, and, and we get into this where we can study God's word to teach it. And so we're, we're studying it to teach it, studying to teach it, and it never really transforms us. us. And, right. and that's a scary part to be in. And there are times I've done that too. I'm like, am I really wrestling with this? Am I letting mm-hmm. God's word do its work in me and then getting to teach from that overflow? And so that's hopefully been my 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 posture and then um you said when you were saying about just hopefully connecting god's word to real life and and being genuine um i started noticing around 18 years old 17 18 how um there was hypocrisy in my life of of what i claimed to follow jesus and yet in some practical areas man i didn't look anything like the jesus i claimed to follow would you would you care to give an example? Uh, yeah. okay, I, I will. I will. And, Don't want to embarrass you. Yeah. And these are easy because I won't tell you the real deep, I don't tell dark the deep ones. ones huh? Yeah, but I remember um, some of my friends were struggling um, with alcohol and maybe a little bit of drugs and, and different things at, at my school, and I was just getting so angry at them. And I remember I thought it was very righteous, and so I called. You became them, that Pharisee. I did. I, I was calling them names because I was upset at what they were doing, and these mm-hmm. were guys who claimed to know Jesus, and they were they were struggling, and I got angry at them and realized that um, I would be because some of them were getting drunk and then hopping in their car and driving home, and I was this mixture of angry at them and also worried for them, and I remember thinking, why didn't they give me a call? to give them a ride home. And as I had that thought, I answered that thought. I said, well, why would they ever give you a call, Trav? Because you would lecture them, you you know. And, and so why is it that me being, trying to follow God and be make good choices, and yet I would be the last person they would ever call? And it got me thinking about, um, wow, am I, am I really, you know, trying to follow Jesus even with my friends as they're struggling? That, that connected with me um, hmm. in a big way. So it had to be hard because if you you had a righteous anger, it was right to be angry about their lifestyle. But how do you come across and how how loving? And I think, you know, it's kind of hard because you don't want to enable them. Hey, I'll pick up every time you get drunk. But hey, in love, how do you speak the truth in love? As Ephesians talks about that, that can be a struggle. And that was hard as a teenager. Do I, you know, how much do I participate here and there? I just realized that I, I thought, wow. Um, maybe I'm not as righteous or as mm. good as I think I am because I'm not doing their behaviors. But man, God has a lot of work to do in, in my your heart. Life. Yeah. Right. And, and I like the fact that you said you're not going to share the deep, dark stuff. But there, <laughs> the, the fact that there is even the stuff that we deal with. And I think I, I, I thought about making a video about this, but I fight every day. Mm-hmm. Every day is a fight. It's a war. We don't fight against flesh and blood, right? Every day is a war. To, to, to be the man God wants me to be, there's temptations every at every turn. Satan is not like, oh, let's give him a day off. <laughs> like, right. And I think sometime in the church when somebody does fall or commit a sin and we jump on them, we, 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 we pile on versus going, man, this is a war. We're, hey, help them get back on, on this side. You know, prepare them, get restore them, and let's let's go back out to battle. But every single day is a battle, and I think that's one thing struggle I struggled with growing up in church. It seemed like every Christian was doing great. It was like this: oh, I'm just doing Jesus. I'm doing blessed and highly favored. You know, the, yeah. all that that beautiful words, and that could be true. But man, my life was more like an EKG. <laughs> right. Me too. And I remember a friend said something. He's not the only one that said it, but. I was learning in the church that it's okay to not be okay. Yes. And um, is it okay to share that I too, as a pastor, that I still have a battle and a war going on? When you mentioned those language of battle, um, it reminds me of 2 Corinthians 10, um, I think 3 through 5, talking about even the thoughts Mm -hmm. and that Paul uses battle language and says, God's given us power. He's like, we don't fight the way with the weapons as others do, but we have power to demolish these strongholds that set up in our mind. and, And to take captives every thought every thought and so it's like this military form but he's talking about our thoughts because lies come in and sometimes that's that's where the enemy is working and i start letting that lie hang out and live in my head and i'm like i need to do battle with that thought because that's actually not a true thought it's i need not. to I usher it out and god gives us power to 
say, does that line up with Christ? And if it doesn't, the truth of Christ, then I'm sorry, I need to show you the door. Um, someone said a neat quote too. They said, you, you, I can't control the thoughts that come into my head, but I can prevent them from making a home. Yeah. They said, you can't keep bats out of the bell tower, but you can prevent them from making nests. Yeah. And so uh, there's a battle thing that I still do too. I mean, and, and that's, that's our enemy's job to put those thoughts in our minds. And you mentioned... The idea of taking every thought, we, the passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 talks about taking every thought, captive obedience of Christ. And one of the things I think we need to make sure we're doing is filling our minds with the word of God. Yeah. That we are constantly learning what God's word is. And sometimes I think, at least my experience has been, I felt like every time I read the Bible, I got, I'm going to have this wow yeah, moment. Like, right. I got to have this like experience every time I open the word of God. I got to run out, hey, guess what I read today? And sometimes it's the mundane, but you're feeding yourself on a regular basis. Sometimes it's like eating those vegetables that are good for you. Yeah. You may not run out going, that was the best piece of broccoli I ever had in my life. But guess what? It's nutritious. Yeah. And we need to make sure that we're getting the word of God. So when it comes to battle, as Jesus did in uh, uh, Matthew chapter four, you know, the battle when Satan tempted him, he, he came back with scripture. Yeah. He was able to fight this battle with the word of God. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? As someone brought up that Jesus, God himself um, has, you know, God's spirit fully with him. And he fought the devil with it is written. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's amazing. Wow. So if Jesus is going to fight and do that battle with God's word, how much more should we be hiding that and bathing ourselves in God's word? And you're right. It's it, not every day do I open the Bible and go, oh my goodness. I yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so that's why I say, I'm either God, teach me something um, new about you or remind me of something true, something right. I've known and yet remind me of it. And, and, uh, there's, I'm, I'm just kind of hiding that in there. Plus then you start to know when those thoughts come in, cause man, the enemy is so tricky and I can be thinking that's a true thought. But the more that I know in God's word, I start to say, wait a minute, uh, there's a, a red light on my dashboard with that thought. I don't think that actually lines up with the truth of what Christ has said about me or the truth that, that God has said about someone else. And so I'm sorry, that thought's gotta go. You, you can't hang out in here. You know? And I think, and I, I think although what you said, because sometime in ministry, we think we gotta go and prepare this great sermon, but I think it should be like you said, let, fill my cup, let it overflow. God, fill my cup. I may be studying Jonah right now, which you are doing a passage on a series on Jonah. But as I do this, it's not about, hey, prepare so I can go tell the people. God teach me first and let this overflow into my life. And I think that's why I appreciate talking to you because sometimes the scriptures that flow out of your, your mouth or out of your mind is stuff you've learned years ago. It's stuff you've learned, you know it's in you. You may not always know the chapter and verse. Right. Oh no. <laughs> but yeah. but it's in there. And I think that's so important. Yeah. No, that's that's true. And I like that you said, I don't know chapter and verse of so many things. I know the content. It's okay that sometimes I'm like, where is that again? Yeah, it's in the Bible I somewhere. In, and I'm so good. I know it's in the second half of the Bible, or I know it's over here. Um, but it's in there. Yeah, it's and in I here. learn more and more. I'm getting more handles on the Bible. So I just think be patient with yourself too. Is I, I tell people as we begin, this is a big book. I'm holding my Bible here. Um, I'm a lifelong learner. I'm gonna be a lifelong learner of God's word. So um I just do something is better than nothing, and you keep doing a, a little bit of something in God's word, and, and before you know it, you're 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 building foundations, and you're starting to understand more, and and um, yeah. So this conversation kind of went from introducing you, and we went right into oh, yeah. the word of God. So let's end it, okay. um, talking about. What advice would you give someone who, whatever stage you're in in life, whether you're a believer, a lifelong believer, uh, you've been walking with God, maybe you're a newer believer, maybe you're in that middle stage, when it comes to getting in the Word of God, what are things that you would encourage them? Because if you're a new believer, it, it can be daunting. The oh, Bible yeah. is the Bible can be boring if you look yeah. in the wrong spots. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> it can be. I was just looking too. Even in the Bible, it can be difficult to understand. Yeah. In Second Peter, there's this line that he talks about Paul's letters, which are already in circulation at the time, and and Peter says. You know, some of Paul's letters can be hard to understand. <laughs> and I'm like, thank you, Peter, because I'm you told the truth, right? Too. Yeah. But you asked for, I just, uh, kind of like what we said there, um, take the long approach, um, read, uh, you know, a, a portion of time. And, and I encourage people to, if they're beginning in this, maybe just go to Jesus and let's get maybe in one of the gospels, like, mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, I say the book of Mark. I, I was going to say Mark too, because it's so funny because Mark is like a, it seemed like a shorter mm -hmm. and he, he'd always go immediately, immediately, it, immediately. It moves fast. <laughs> it's quick. Um, and it doesn't have the genealogy early. Yeah, that, that, get, get. that could get you. Yeah, it does. And I just think, and so even a 
portions and to read and to take a little time to reflect, ask a few questions, talk to God about what you read, and then um, pick it up again the next day. And if you, you forget one day or you don't do it, don't be hard on yourself. Yeah. Just go again. And I, I think about, because maybe this month, maybe you haven't read God's word at all in the last 30 days. Well, maybe this month, you you knock out you know six days this month and you have and you ingested and read God's word. Well, that's better than last month. Yeah. So keep yeah. that going. Yeah, and I think it, and I always tell students you know don't focus on what you don't know, focus on what you do know, what you do understand. Like you can read a passage and but like, oh, I don't understand it, so I give up. But what do you understand? And I think as a believer, this is a beautiful thing that I think about reading God's word is as a believer, the Holy Spirit is that with you, leading and guide you in scripture to illumine your mind to truth, to let you see things. I remember talking to a young lady um, in the tradition I grew up in, catching the Holy Ghost meant you jumped around the church and you lost it, right? And she said, I never caught the Holy Ghost. And I said, and I had to explain her, you don't catch the Holy Ghost, but the Bible says when you trust Christ, you're, the Holy Spirit can, comes living inside of you. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit today of redemption. So the Holy Spirit is living, living in you and his job is to lead and guide you in truth. So one day we're doing, we're, we're working on an organization and doing Bible study and she was like, she's reading past, she's like, oh, I understand what this is. I said, guess what? You just had Holy Ghost experience. Yeah. Holy Spirit just illumined your mind to truth. And I think that's the beautiful thing about reading the Bible. You're not by yourself. God is with you, leading and guiding you in truth. Yeah, exactly. And the Bible is revealing, God is revealing himself mm -hmm. to us in the word. So I, I sometimes ask, is there anything I learn about God, you know, in this? Is there anything I learn about me? And sometimes I don't <laughs> in there. Um, or is there any action? Is there anything that as I read today that would um, encourage me in how I live life or respond today? And sometimes there's one of those. And there's some passages I'm, I'm having a harder time yeah. finding that. But I go Leviticus, down, like, well, how do you respond to Leviticus? Uh, I know. And some of those going, wow. And then you take that bigger approach and then you ask a friend or you ask, you know, saying, hey, I was reading here and I was just really confused. And I think, oh, we love, well, let's go back to that passage and take a look. I, I was talking to a friend the other day. I wish believers would do that more. Like when we get around each other, hang out, we'll talk about sports. We'll talk. Sometimes we don't talk about the Word of God. Yeah. Can we just chat about what what fuels our lives? What's our source? And you said something too about responding. Uh, my wife and I. My wife did a Bible study for some ladies, and uh, one of the key things she did in that we talked about it was when you read the Bible, read, reflect, and respond. Mm -hmm. And she liked the word respond more than apply because sometimes it's not necessarily you apply. You have to do something. Sometimes responding to God's word is just standing in awe. Yeah. I mean, you read Psalm 104, talk about the greatness of God, and you're like, whoa, God is great. Or Psalm 40 where he talks about the the, the, the nation like a, like a drop in a bucket before him. And you're like, what? <laughs> like the nations, right? And so I think there's a lot of ways that we can respond to the word of God. It doesn't always mean go and do. It means reflect and then what what is it that i need to understand about god do i need to stop doing something do i need to do something do i need to just wow look at my great god yeah no i agree i agree and and you know the, the bible does talk about itself uh and that it is living the word of god is living and active and, and that's, that's hebrews chapter four right? that is yeah <laughs> verse 12. See, look at the guy you got on that, that one <laughs> and, and and so i trust and the reason why god the, the word of god is living is because god is alive and mm -hmm. so I, I believe that even when we read God's word, we, we I take a moment to say, Lord, I, I'm, I'm, you're here with me. Um, I, as I read your word, I, I need your Holy Spirit to teach me and, and to meet with me in this. And let me carry something along. And, and that's maybe even something, if there's a word or a phrase um, to, to, to take with you after you read, then maybe that, that you're thinking about it throughout the day. And believe right. it or not, more often than not, something comes up and you're like, that reminds me mm -hmm. of what I read. Or maybe there's this opportunity and I get to tell someone, you know what I just read today? That This might help you. Or even sometime it may not be that day. It may be Yo, next week. Yeah. And that's so awesome how God sometimes prepares you for things like you're, you're reading this and you're like, oh, it's my name. But next thing you know, two weeks later, like, I read, you know, it, it, this applies to what I'm dealing with right now, but I think it's, it's on us to be faithful to get in God's word. So real quick, what are some resources that you would recommend people to help them get into the word of God? Because I remember Tony Evans said, um, see, I kind of went to Tony Evans Institute before he had one. I listened to all his sermons in my car, but he said about sometimes if you don't want to read the word. If you, like he said, if you're not hungry, you ever come into the house, you're not hungry, but then you come in the house and somebody's cooking and that's good cooking makes you hungry. 
And so I think sometime if you don't feel like reading the word of God, what are some things that can help you get into the word of God? I think Psalm 119 is one for me. Like read Psalm 119 and David talking about how awesome God's word is, how it's sweet, all those things. But what are some resources that can help people get into the word of God that you can recommend? Yeah, well, um, definitely having a Bible of your own and one, <laughs> and one that is in hopefully a readable uh, you know, language. Uh, it's hard to read something if it's really hard to understand. And so I think having that, I do think having a couple good resources, especially for young people, uh, there are blessings in the with the internet and even having a, a podcast phone, yeah. or, or someone that they trust, like a, a Mr. Brown, maybe your pastor might have a, where there are messages or devotions that sometimes you're having a hard time getting there, but you know you're gonna go to this person who's going to uh, teach or expound upon a, a verse or so. Um, sometimes a worship song helps me if there's a favorite worship song or two to at least quiet myself and listen to the truth of this song that praises God and it kind of helps me maybe focus a bit before I read. Sometimes worship songs help me find scripture. Like if there's a really good worship song, sometimes they come out of scripture and you can go and find some of the yeah. things that the songs are saying in the word of God. That That's amazing. Me. That's the best for me. And I feel like that's a good mark of a, a song because sometimes I've noticed as I've gotten older, I'm not always singing along, but what I read and see up there, I'm like, you know, that reminds me of mm -hmm. Psalm yep. 103. So I always have my Bible with me. Yep. And sometimes I get in my own time and I go just turn to that passage and I'm worshiping God because that song directed me to somewhere in God's yeah, word. I did I that go, Sunday. Oh, that was a Sunday. I was like, okay, that I'm, look, I started, started reading Psalm. I'm like, man, this is reflective of what they're, what we're singing about. And it comes right here from scripture. Yeah. And yeah. Some, the vice versa is sometimes I hear songs like, wait a minute, that did. I know. I'm like, where, where would I link over? That's a big stretch. Maybe they were talking about this, but um, I just also encourage uh, us to to be gracious god is gracious with us to be gracious with ourselves yeah. too that there are going to be some days where i just don't feel like i'd rather scroll through my phone rather than take time with with god's word and that's okay i admit it i say it to god i said i'm distracted right now but i know this is going to be good um and you know i've even will go for a walk around the block a little bit mm. too even to pray um, if I'm having a hard time reading right there, but to say God is present, how about I just remove myself from my normal surroundings? And what if I just go for a walk around the block, but rather than listening to any music or or getting distracted, what if I just kind of talk to God and you don't have to talk out loud <laughs> and scare, <laughs> well, your, scare your neighbors, <laughs> but I'm going to, because now my body's doing something, I actually find that I'm walking or if I'm riding a bike, my body's doing something and I can actually be a little bit more attentive to God for a couple minutes and, and pray. One of the best prayers is God, I don't feel like praying. I think so. Because you just prayed. You did. <laughs> you, and, just, you just talked to him. And you're not telling God anything he didn't already know <laughs> because nothing is hidden he, uh, in God's sight. And I think that's Hebrews 4, 13. Look there you that. go. We went right <laughs> after. Um, I could be wrong on that reference. Um, but nothing is hidden from his sight. Everything is laid bare. So you can totally be honest to God because he already knows. And I think there's something true about that to say, Lord, I'm frustrated today. Yeah. And, and uh, that's already talking to God. And now you're acknowledging his presence you're acknowledging your dependence and your need for him and i i think god loves that he loves to hear his kids voices right yeah, that's the rawness of even the way peter prayed the way paul prayed paul prayed like kill him god like I know. Know. you know he just prayed maybe we should do a podcast on prayer but i think i think being honest and open with god he knows already and it's just for us to realize that and there's a comfort to that um and i think that that we need to lean into that that god and you mentioned something too like if you miss a day of reading the bible or prayer God does not love you less. God's not waiting to love a future version of you. He's You're accepted in the beloved. How do I know that? Because scripture teaches me that. That in Christ, I'm accepted. Yeah. And I'm loved. And and this is another deep one we talk about later. But I remember Charles Stanley said, do you know you can never disappoint God? And I was like, what? Like, God wouldn't be happy. Yeah, that's different. You can The Bible says you can grieve the spirit. You can grieve God. But God will never be disappointed because for God to be disappointed, he thought you would do something else. But he knew what you would do. That's good. And I'm like, yeah. man, that just makes me see... God is a more loving father, not this God in the in the sky or God like like as a kid. God's up there waiting to step on me. No, God loves you. He's accepted you and you're his child. Well, that was a big lie that I grabbed on when I was younger because I assumed God's posture toward me was that he was shaking his head in disappointment. Just that that when I thought of how God looked at me, I just thought he was just Trav, you messed up again. When <laughs> when are you going to get it right? And that was my pers perspective. 
But then that's where I need God's word to actually look and say, is that true? Yeah. Because for a while I thought that was true and that's how God, um, and so I was creating my own image of mm -hmm. God and what he's doing. And that's not what the scriptures say. They actually say that he delights in me because of Christ that um, I think that's huge. Yeah, and even Psalm 103 says he knows we're but dust, yeah. that he has that patience with us. He knows we're but dust, but yeah. yet he has the patience. And I think you mentioned this in a sermon uh, last year, uh, at the end of the year, you talked about Adam and Eve. And I, and I first heard this when you guys said, I think, how oh, he's gonna say it, he's gonna say it. When I, when I always were here, when Adam was in the garden and God came looking for him, he said, where are you, Adam? And I always felt like, where are you, Adam? I'm gonna get you, you, you did something wrong, right? Backhand, yeah. right? But, because um, in the Bible, when we read about it, we don't hear inflections, we don't hear tone. But someone said once, it's more like, Adam, where are you? You should be with me. And I thought, that changes everything. Yeah. Where, where did you go? You belong with me. Yes. But now there's this sin, there's this huge thing. And then the rest of the scriptures are God's beautiful story about how he, and the lengths he goes to bring us back Again. to him. <laughs> and Jesus and is, is going to be the one that's going to crush, you know, it, it's, I'm starting to go, oh, yeah, where God wants to bring Adam and Eve and men and women back to Him, and 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 He does through Jesus Christ. So. so, if we have to wrap this up, we would say this conversation went a lot of different places. It sure did. <laughs> That's right. And and we want people to connect faith in life. And one, I think, the biggest ways is, or greatest ways is to. I hate using the word greatest. One way is to get in the Word of God. Yeah. Get in the Word of God and get the Word of God in you. Um, and don't put pressure on yourself. Don't overthink it. But inform your mind. Uh, Romans twelve one and two. Do you know that? Do you know that by heart? Can you quote that verse? I can. And I was think about in the um, King James. You know, well, <laughs> that's how you say different ones. Um, I, I know it's uh, uh, offer your bodies as living sacrifices. I beseech you. Two? I beseech, I beseech you, therefore, you. Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you commit your bodies a living sacrifice, holding something to God, which is your reasonable, reasonable. service. Um, that's or, King James. It is reasonable. And service, verse two uh, is your, proper, uh, your act of worship. And then be do not be conformed yep. to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Although that's probably part NIV <laughs> maybe a little bit I'm such a, I do that all the time I, I get King James NIV NIS all of it kind of just ESV kind of mixed up but hey read Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 and I think that could be encouraging to you um, and if you want other resources I know the Bible project is a great resource to understand the Bible um, just I think you get in the word of God actually I made a video about Bible apps I use I use the Olive Tree Bible app which Good. I really like because I got I bought commentaries and I'm doing a Bible study with a friend we go through together but get in the word of God and get the word of God and use one of the greatest ways i said that again it's a great way to connect faith in life i agree i'm looking forward to more conversations thanks mr brown thank you for joining us for the podcast connecting faith in life i'm mr brown and that, that was our guest travis osborne if you enjoyed pastor travis osborne hey let us know leave a comment let him know because i think he's come back on the show uh, he's currently the pastor of Valley Christian Family. You can check them out. I think it's vcfamily.org. So you can check out his messages and what he does. And I'm really hoping to be a part. He can come back on the episode. Even if he doesn't come back in the future, I already got two more episodes coming up soon with Pastor Travis Osborne. So check it out. Follow us. Listen to the next episode of Connecting Faith and Life with me, Mr. Brown, but also with Travis Osborne. Thanks for joining us. Remember, live for God by connecting faith and life. I say remember, but I don't know if I said that before, but that's a good idea. Live for God by connecting faith and life. Until next time, peace.